Welcome to World Bites Friend, where I share bite-sized messages that bring big time changes to you. I'm Bumi Ademola. Last time I shared with you three very important reasons why you must always be able to hear the voice of God every single moment of your life. So today I want us to talk about exactly how. Exactly how you can have that ability, how you can train your spiritual ear to be able to hear the voice of God without doubt, every single moment of your life. The Apostle John, in Revelation 2, as well as Revelation 3, a total of seven times, he kept saying, he who is able to hear, let him listen and give heed to what the Spirit says. So let's talk about the ability to be able to hear God's voice clearly. What must you do? Well, first of all, you must train your human spirit. God, when he's going to speak to you, my friend, he's not going to speak to you through your physical ear. This physical ear right here. He is going to speak to you through the ear of your spirit man, your spiritual ear. That's what scripture says in Proverbs 20, 27. It says the human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's inmost being. So if God is going to speak to you, if he is going to shed light on on your life, on your situation, is going to be through your spirit man. And therefore, the more trained, the more perfectly trained your spirit man is, the greater your ability, the better your ability will be to hear God clearly. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 40, he says, when a disciple is perfectly trained, he will be like his master. And so when you're able to perfectly train your spirit, you'll be able to hear God just as clearly as the Lord Jesus Christ did. I'm sure you know that Jesus Christ never had problems with hearing God. He was always hearing the voice of God right from the time. I mean, even taking from the time his ministry began at the baptism, when he heard the voice of the Father from heaven say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And so like Jesus, Jesus says, you're gonna be able to hear God as clearly as that without doubt. You won't be able to, there will be no controversy. Is this me? Is this my voice? Is this God's voice? No, every single time when your spirit man is perfectly trained, you will be confident about the voice of God. Now, the three main things that you must do to train your spiritual ear to always be able to hear God's voice clearly and consistently. Number one, you must always stay full of the light of God's word. You know, I read previously Proverbs 20, 27, that your spirit is the lamp of the Lord. That's how he sheds light. However, you need to understand that the word of God is the light that God sheds. That's how God sheds light by revealing his word to you. And so the more full of God's word that you are, the more light your spirit will enlighten your spirit will be and consequently you'll be able to hear God more. So the more full of God's word that you are, the greater your ability will be to hear the voice of God. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The Passion Translation says, truth's shining light guides me in my choices and decisions, the revelation of your word makes my pathway clear. So the more revelation of God's word that you have within you, the clearer you will be that the, about the choices and the decisions you make being led and guided by God. When you're full of the revelation of God's word, God will be able to guide your decisions. God will be able to guide your actions. You'll be able to hear exactly the mind of God on every issue of your life. The more light, I like to put it this way, the more light you allow into your spirit, the greater and the louder God's voice, the greater and louder God's voice will be to you. That's what Jesus Christ said. Jesus in Matthew 6, 22 and 23, he said, the eyes of your spirit allow revelation light to enter into your being. So without the word of God, there is no light that enters your spirit. And if there is no light that enters your spirit, you cannot hear the voice of God. And so it says, Jesus Christ said here, he said, the eyes of your spirit is what allows revelation light to enter into your being. And then he now says, if your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. 
In other words, if your, life, if your heart is unclouded and full of the word of God, then revelation floods in. You're able to hear God's voice. But then in the next verse, he says, but if not, the light cannot penetrate. Light cannot penetrate where the scripture is not studied. Light cannot penetrate and darkness takes its place. And of course, when there's darkness, you're lost. You have no direction. So God cannot speak where the word of God does not exist. If you want to be clear about God's voice in all your decisions, in all your actions, you got to constantly stay full of the light of God's word. The level of light you allow into your spirit, that's the degree to which you're going to be able to hear God. Now, number two, you need to practice obedience. If you want to be able to hear God's voice clearly, train your spirit to hear God's voice, you need to practice obedience. When you hear God, Act on what you have heard in obedience. Scripture says in Hebrews 3.15, it says, But now is the time. Never forget the warning. Today, pay attention to this friend. Today, if you hear God's voice speaking to you, do not harden your hearts against him. You know, friend, every time you harden your heart against God, you hear God's voice you know that this is God telling you to do something, but you don't respond to it. Each time you harden your heart and disobey God, it becomes harder for you to hear God the next time. Somebody once says, you cannot hear God beyond the point of your last obedience. If you want to keep hearing God, you need to practice obedience. When you do hear him, act on what he said obediently. Because every time you choose not to obey, what you know to be God's voice, it makes your spiritual ear dull. It makes it difficult for you to hear God the next time. Look at what scripture says in Matthew. Jesus himself said this, Matthew 13, 14 through 15. He says, and in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will, hearing you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. Why? You know, it's possible for you to hear sounds, but not to decipher meaning. And Jesus says right here, the people will hear sounds, but they will not understand. They will not, there will be no meaning to whatever it is. Have you ever had a dream and not understood it? Sometimes it's because people hear, but they don't understand because they have been in a practice of disobeying God. And so he says, he explains why in verse 15, he says, for the hearts of this people have grown dull and their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes, they have closed. The more you obey God's voice, the more you will hear his voice. Luke 8, 18, Jesus said, pay attention to how you hear to those who listen to my teaching more understanding will be given. When you listen to the Lord, you're going to get more revelation. That's what it says. The Passion Translation says, so pay careful attention to your hearts as you listen to my teaching. For those who have open hearts, even more revelation will be given to them until it overflows. You want to overflow in hearing God's voice? Always act upon what he tells you. Last but not the least, if you want to train your spirit to be able to hear God clearly all the time, you need to embrace a lifestyle of worship. This is my favorite. I have personally experienced this reality that God is heard most clearly in the room of worship. To me, it's the easiest way to hear the voice of God because God inhabits our worship. You feel closest to him, and I do believe he's closest to you in the room of worship. We see how in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, the apostles were worshiping the Lord. The Bible says, and they were fasting, and then the Holy Spirit said. So God's voice will always come forth when you're worshiping him. Also, Elisha, we see his experience in 2 Kings 3, 15, when he said, bring me a musician. And it happened as the musician was playing, God's hand came upon him, and the message of the Lord came came to Elijah. So if you want the message of God to come to you, the voice of God to come to you, embrace a lifestyle of worship. I do trust you were blessed today. If you've not already done so, my dear friend, subscribe to this channel, Knowing God Media, follow all my social media handles. Until next time, stay blessed. Mm -hmm.